I'm gonna keep reading the rest of you. So back to cut my week break and talk about all the fun, non-Thanksgiving, but for unfortunately holiday-themed things coming up because that's something we got to talk about. Some weird, fun gifts. I'm Vin Stone. That's Joel Bryan. That's Pedro Mateus. And uh, by your powers mm-hmm. combined, uh, we're here after a very long pre-show discussing petrol and international bank routing. Mm-hmm. Ooh, fun <laughs> times. Fun times indeed. <laughs> What's going on, Jill? You've been busy with the uh, scale. 17 is yeah. coming up. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's going to be every week up until the event. And uh, what we did this week was fun. The Linux Chicks LA, we're planning a really fun Raspberry Pi project for a booth at Scale 17X. So I'm very excited about it, but I'm not going to announce what it is till later. It'll be a lot of fun. And all the all the people from LGC joining us will have a lot of fun. And um, also been having fun preparing for our Dungeon and Dragons RPG um, dungeon crawler that on Jordan Stream uh, starting this Thursday, which is tomorrow. So that's going to be a lot of fun. We did that last night. We started working on it. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yeah, no. Over here, well, uh, it's kind of cathartic <laughs> when you look into your uh, when you look at your life. You get a chance to take a step back and look at your life and realize that it fits into some cardboard boxes. Like, uh, yes, look at them. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> it's like, oh, that's that that that's my life right there. Huh. Okay. So yeah, the move is coming. It's. Uh, Saturday is the big day mm-hmm. is when we're going to haul all of that plus these boxes over here. They're just all going to go to the new place. Fun times. Mm-hmm. Fun times indeed. Not a whole lot to report mm-hmm. over here. Uh, I did beat Wolfenstein 2, part 2 of the oh. sequel. I finally got through that. That was like a nine hour experience. And what I can only express is imagine if... This game, if at the end of this game it's directed by Quentin Tarantino, I went, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some genuine jaw dropping moments. It's like, wow. I can't believe you got away with All putting right. that in a video game, which is a whole other level. And like, you expect quite a bit of just what in a video mm-hmm. game. And it, yeah, it, it got two very distinct, like, what? Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll just have to accept this. So I had a good time with that. That was worth whatever I paid for it. But good job, team, despite being published by Bethesda, because I, I know mm-hmm. that was probably not fun to work with. All right. So let's get off to a super elite hacker interface. Oh, yes. Look Some at it. Yay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's thing. Edex UI, man. A science fiction terminal emulator designed for large touchscreens that run all major OSs. Man, Pedro, that, that smells like Electron. Yes, yes it does, and uh, they even in fact say so. The The reason it has a lowercase e right at the start is for Electron. I mean, they already did Electron everything else. Why not do a desktop environment uh, terminal emulator type of situation? Might as well. <laughs> <laughs> I actually really, really love this. This was so much fun. And... um you know, it's it's really cool because the interface is a combination of an extremely useful terminal as well as a file manager with HTOP stats. And mm-hmm. it's really cool. So it's nice to have an application like this that's just for uh, fun, but it actually is functional. Um, unlike uh, the Hollywood Hacker terminal interface, which is in in the show notes, uh, but that that one um, is just for show and not as functional. Um, but it, but that one has some fun things about it too. Like it plays music and has the matrix theme. <laughs> I also but, forgot but, to mention uh, like right at the beginning of the show, yeah. absolutely no one tweet us during the show. Yes. Do not. <laughs> Just fair oh, warning. Oh, I yes. let everyone know. <laughs> I tried it. It's available as a, it's got a 32 bit and a 64 bit. I, I launched it on mm-hmm. the 1804 mm-hmm. box. Uh, app image took a minute to load. Took took so much yeah. of a minute yeah. to load. I was kind of doing something else when my primary display went. It's like, Whoa, oh, oh, right, right. We were working on that. I just kind of assumed <laughs> it noped, and I was going to open a terminal up later and just see what where it noped. And it's not horrible. I mean, it's borderline functional. It gives you your disk, network, RAM, storage at a glance. It's got a built-in keyboard because it's made in for a touch interface. I mm-hmm. thought it would be fun. Yeah. Like a very Mm -hmm. practical utility, if you're anything like me, to have it up and running as the only interface for the cable installer or anybody that has to use your computer. 
Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was uh I tried it on the um the ThinkPad X240 and I heard the fan kicking up even before it showed up. It's like what's happening? What's going on? Is this like a coin miner in disguise? And when then when it first this started isn't up playing chess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it first started up, and I look at the CPU utilization graphic, and it's like, oh, okay, we're almost at a hundred percent here. All right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Over here, though, on this box, it was like, oh yeah, it's using like three percent on all the threads of the Ryzen processor. Yeah, give me more. So yeah, there's uh, there's something going on there. They do say. If you do decide to uh, to try this out and maybe like do a video for the YouTubes and whatnot, don't type any passwords because as you're typing the little keyboard uh, uh, down uh, on the lower right, it lights up with your keystrokes. So yes. don't type passwords <laughs> if you're doing a video. Do Just it. Saying. Do it. Do it. One hundred percent. But don't type in the right things, man. Some people in chases. And they're like, oh, I got it. No, they wasted their time. But they won't admit it. They'll never come back in the comments and be like, man, I mm -hmm. tried. But yeah. ha ha. <laughs> okay, uh, Fedora's up next. Oh yes. So uh, one of the Fedora developers, uh, Paul Frields, was uh, he made a post about uh, the life cycle objective, the problems, the solutions, and the proposal that he has. So basically, Fedora as it currently stands, their release structure has been in place for over a decade. It's uh, the six months release, and then you, uh, after three months or so, after the. Um, <laughs> after the, yeah a threat of doom <laughs> but yeah after uh for about three months after the uh the release of a given fedora version you still get support but then you will need to upgrade to the next one or you wait another couple of months and you'll see the um the brand new version come out and in order to get everything on the back end, retooled and working properly, uh, he's suggesting that Fedora move to a yearly uh, release cycle, or at least for this one version. They're going to stop at Fedora 19, get everything done, and then uh, F30 will come out a year afterwards. So that seems to be a very good idea from where i'm uh i'm standing there's already so much overlap going on between two contiguous versions of fedora like if you've had fedora 28 and now you have fedora 29 chances are the kernel is probably the same uh, a lot of the tools are in the same versions there's not a whole lot of difference at least for um uh, that amount of time that the two releases are still being actively supported so it makes sense and i do hope that they decide to do that not just for the Fedora 30 release, but going forward as well. That just seems like a good idea. No, Pedro, this is clearly a byproduct of IBM purchasing Red Hat and Fedora's... <laughs> you know, I did suggest that uh, maybe with <laughs> IBM and their uh, focus on enterprise environments, that maybe Fedora having an LTS version wouldn't be such a bad thing. <laughs> This is this looks like a step in the right direction. I'm going to be saying. honest with you. <laughs> yeah. Fedora having an LTS version just see I don't want to live in the world man. I, I don't. <laughs> this is so wrong. <laughs> yeah. So I was I thought this was a, really a smart decision because it gives the developers more time for tooling changes, testing and bug fixes that will overall improve Fedora's reliability. So um, it's a really good move. Mm -hmm. and, and you know has some gives them a lot of uh time to uh to fix fix all the things <laughs> yeah they actually get the work mm -hmm. uh, that needs to be done on the back end and then release yeah. a yearly version it's like okay it's fedora yeah. 31 it released in 2020 there we go nope uh, I clearly interference okay by ibm that. um getting ready to destroy uh fedora <laughs> and <laughs> It's kind, of, it's kind of interesting. I, I completely get the logic yeah. behind it to be able to take a step back, yeah. retool everything, get make things more efficient. I mean, something mm -hmm. has to give in that scenario. Yes. And it seems very logical. And I, I like how it was covered in the message. It's like, just tone down on the doom here. I mean, this has <laughs> to be done. So chill out. Don't let it spiral into a thread of what I was joking about with IBM. Mm -hmm. But 
some people are going to do it anyway. So we got some news from Libra office and it's not the municipality of Tyrania, because that would be too cool of a place to live in. <laughs> no, it's not Tyrania, it's Tirana. And uh, it's in uh, Albania, which uh, they're moving, uh, they're trying, or at least trying to move all of their um, government infrastructure to open source software. And of course, they're starting with uh, your office suite, as it were. So they're... Uh, Introducing the uh, Document Foundation as uh, proud to announce that the uh, municipality of Tirana is now working with LibreOffice and they're basically, the, the end goal here is to migrate all of the government facilities to LibreOffice to get everyone standardized on free and open source software, which is a very good idea, especially when you have a country like Albania that is now <laughs> finally starting to catch up with the rest of the world to not have to worry about spending money on licensing. That's just yes. a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. And, you know, what, what really struck me about this article is, is, is just that, what you were saying, Pedro. It's a, this is actually really amazing that they're going open source, considering that Albania was once one of the most isolated countries in the world mm -hmm. and um, up, to, up to the revolution from communism, which was in 1991. So, you know, yeah. they're still, you know, it, it, in, uh, growing and enjoying, um, you know, living in the modern age. And that, that's just, it was really amazing. Um, I'd done yeah. a lot of research on Albania years ago, and I, I remember uh, it was hard to find information on Albania <laughs> because it was so isolated. And that it was was on North Korea, but it came close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's good news. I mean, the majority of the thousand desktops, the uh, municipality, uh, they, they've already been migrated to LibreOffice. That's a good thing. They started with HR because, man, if you need a hive of office docs and spreadsheets, that's a good place to start. Um, yes. Good work on that. Mm -hmm. uh, the LibreOffice writer and calc manuals have all been translated into Albanian. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's awesome. Good on that. And like my personal thought on all this is like, all governmental entities should use or be forced to use open source software. And yes, just to maintain exactly. the ability to mm -hmm. future proof it 100, 200, 300 years. Mm -hmm down the road, you're going to be able to have access to it. And it seems like the only people radically against that are the people selling software that is not open source. Microsoft? I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I have the inkling that, that there might be a connection. I'm not 100% on it, though. Not 100%. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, it, you know, making light of this situation, it seems um, rather ironic that a country that's just... Uh, shook away communism uh it is deciding to embrace communist uh software practices like open source and free software hi there steve Ballmer. how you doing you know mm -hmm. listen we don't need <laughs> i understand it's basic humanity it's like let's inject politics into what <laughs> spin the wheel uh software yeah that makes sense let's do mm -hmm. that and people will go there anyway that's good on them. <laughs> Definitely good yes. on them. We have good Wonderful. news for people that uh, might have a little issue yeah. with blinky GIFs. Yeah. Well, this is this is awesome. This is a Chrome extension to view um, GIFs safely without the risk of having an epileptic seizure. And that's always a good thing. We've experienced <laughs> that also on Discord. <laughs> it would be nice to have this on Discord as well, but we can right-click. But anyways... Um, this is really cool because it slows down all GIF files to three frames per second and works really, really well. I, I tested it on um, Chrome and Chromium and Vivaldi, and it all the, it, the extension worked very well. And I've actually just been really surprised, especially in today's day of inclusive and accessible web design and the laws pertaining to that by the Web Content mm -hmm. Accessibility Guidelines and the American with Disability Act, that there weren't features like the sooner. <laughs> I mean, they, mm -hmm. <laughs> it, yeah, it's, it's, uh, you know, these, these laws are, they're really coming down on these laws for accessibility. So this, this, that kind of needs to, to change in our code. <laughs> I was kind of with you with, wait yeah. a minute, this didn't exist. I mm -hmm. really like yeah. the backstory of this. Uh, his girlfriend had an issue with a photosensitive 
epilepsy. And that's exactly what you would think about a blinky light short circuit. And uh, he was going through Twitter and he found an article about you know, how gifts mm -hmm. can induce that. So that's the genesis of this. I was like, good on you, mate, for making that a thing. Uh, as you said, it's a Chrome mm -hmm. extension. You can throw it yeah. in there. I mean, it's going to analyze the GIF. And you found out that there's a couple of yeah. levels you can do this to make it 100%. But like the AAA standard is wicked expensive in terms of CPU cycles. But mm -hmm. yeah. this is kind of working in a good enough capacity. Yeah. And, you know, neat. It's yep. awesome. I mean, I was really happy, too, because I... Yeah, I'm going to be, you know, using this extension on all my browsers because I have because um, I have vision issues. I have photosensitivity as well. So <laughs> this is great, actually. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you guys 100 percent. It's like, how was this not a thing? Seriously. I know. I know. I just, <laughs> now all yeah. we need is a plugin that completely rips out any auto playing videos, period. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, the, call it yeah. the ZDNet plugin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need this in Discord as well. <laughs> a permanent. No, <laughs> no I'm kidding. Well, what we need a little bit less of is people finding um, or coding backdoors into stuff, especially stuff that is widely used uh, by products developed by big companies uh, that just about everyone has access to. So uh, this one was... Um, uh, the news comes from Ars Technica, and it's uh, the flat map stream, which is available through NPM, which uh, had a two-part backdoor built into it. Uh, basically, what it does is the first one just set up the uh, the way, and no one saw, like, none of the moderators, none of the uh, code uh, revisionists. Yeah? Did, did you just non-ironically say the way? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just checking. Sorry. DOA. Okay, no, no way. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the the first one uh, paved the way. There it is again. Uh, to um, basically introducing the payload, which came in update two, and yeah, basically what it does is it targets a very specific uh, cryptocurrency wallet. Uh, that it was developed by a very specific company. And it that's all it, uh, as far as anyone is able to tell, that's all it does. And uh, how it got up there, well, that got me thinking. This isn't the first time we've heard about NPM uh, being uh. <laughs> used as like a poison repository for distributing malware. And it seems to be, this is at least the third time that I know of, uh, that NPM has been compromised at a repository level. So yeah. this is setting a really bad precedent. <laughs> it's like NPM I mean, being the repository I'm for not, malware, really? I'm not going to blame NPM. <laughs> yeah. uh, what I'm definitely going to do is tell everyone what you already know is you can't rely on random you just developers to vet your code for you if you're going to be running yeah, that in production. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if it's NPM or anything. And if you're listening and you're wondering, oh, no, and you're terrified because Pedro did not tell you which wallet no, that would no, be no. the wallet <laughs> developed by Copay. Copay. And they have yeah. fixed it, but they just, you know, Copay said, just assume your private keys are affected, dump them, and um, respool that business. Uh, yeah, the big issue here was that the NPM uh, people uh, went silent when the like the community mm -hmm. discussion started brewing about this issue, they went quiet for six yeah. days. And then they finally said, yeah, that's been compromised. It Sorry. is also one of the things developer, I mean, what got compromised was the flat map <laughs> stream and the maintainer mm -hmm. walked in and said, listen, I have not maintained this thing for like six months. So I don't know why you guys are blowing me up about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> to his point, yeah, fair exactly. enough. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's like if you're still hosting something that is basically abandonware at that point, you need to put it in like a I don't know read only mode so people can only download it. You are not no upload fun. stuff to it. No. <laughs> uh, more adventure, man. More adventure. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, come well, on. <laughs> yeah. So um, another thing they mentioned in this article was that the Chaos Computer Club in Germany, along with the members of OpenWRT, 
recommended that all routers should come with an expiration date for the firmware that must be visible to users before they purchase the device. Of course, this is, should be common sense. And, uh, and they also recommend after the vendor stops supporting a model's firmware, vendors should allow users to install custom firmware like OpenWRT on abandoned and end-of-life devices. You know, this, this all makes sense. You know, we, we should be able to, to, you know, uh, secure our routers ourselves. And, um, you know, a lot of people in Germany want to be able to do that. And, and you need to be, uh, allow that flexibility. <laughs> all right, Pedro, that was a bit of a call. jarring jump there, Jill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, we were talking about the NPM issue, and then you immediately Ooh. jumped to halfway down Ooh. the story about the run. Oh my god! I just messed up. I'm so sorry. Do you get a look at like, this Okay, way, did man. I just pass out for like, like a few the... seconds? Oh, what, happened? <laughs> what happened? I don't know what that, happened. That, that was the thing. It was like, oh, I guess I don't have to read that story. Um... <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Oh my gosh! How embarrassing. <laughs> So we got to look at a couple of things. I mean, <laughs> along with that, you now, admittedly, Germany's come up with some really dumb tech laws. All right. Yes. They have 100%. <laughs> uh, not my fault, but I was like, yeah, I agree. Uh, this, Pedro, this isn't one of them, man. I mean, no. <laughs> every time I see something like this, because we don't think about a route, we think of, you know, especially people of our vintage, when we think about routers, we think of a particularly dumb advice, dumb device that you can't mm -hmm. do much with. This is not the case anymore. I mean, you're, you're dealing with something with usually several hundred megs of RAM, dual core processors, and yeah. uh, a mm -hmm. gang of flash on. When was the last time you checked the firmware version on your router? Yeah, I usually only check it when I see, oh, it's gone down. What happened? Oh, it was a firmware update. Okay, mm. cool. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And, you know, I'm absolutely with you. It's like, oh, these are actually sensible minimum effort stuff uh, that would have a very significant impact on how security is handled for your common household. Uh, set, having this set from day one, uh, in the, you know, less tech, uh, less tech heavy, uh, branch of your family is just a very good way to stop a lot of the most common exploits from getting into their network. Yeah. So it, it's just a good idea. I think at the end of the day, this just reads like a list of common sense, but good luck getting yeah. it implemented anywhere outside of Germany. And I do want to make a point. <laughs> ZDNet, you forgot to include an autoplay video. What's wrong, man? My heart, it breaks. Yeah, yes. Yeah, that's there unusual. was no random sound coming through that Firefox tab as I opened it. I've had to create custom rules for Z, ZDNet, mm -hmm. and I didn't see it attempt to play a video and jerk around in a seizure, uh, you know, doing its best to give me a semi unrelated video as it does. And it didn't do it. And I said something wrong. So I had to go check. And I was like, maybe. Huh. Well, all right. Yeah. 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 And also this and Jill's bit you already manual. heard. She mm -hmm. jumped yeah, again yeah. on that one. So I, I apologize. <laughs> oh my gosh. I've never done that before. So I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, this also may not stop manufacturers from putting their the security compliant stickers on non compliant hardware because sometimes yeah. they do do that when they're not supposed to. I mean, if this <laughs> this this gets adopted into law or as close to it as it can get in Germany, mm -hmm. um, then yeah, they're looking at a very serious European court case. Uh, against them. It's kind of like the 80 plus certification on power supplies. It, you really don't want to put that sticker there unless you really have that certification because otherwise you're going to get fined all over. This is true. And I know a lot of people are <laughs> sitting back, you're screaming. I can hear you right now. What about the DDWRT? And uh, you can't get that on all routers, unfortunately. No. You should yeah. be able to, but exactly. you can't. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, uh, in the perfect world, we would have complete access to all of our in-home devices to do the changes we want to do. Uh, one of the big complaints I have for this particular Sky router is, uh, let me change the DNS server, Sky. Oh, That man. would be nice. Well, that's, yeah. I, I actually, all right, <laughs> oh. for the common user, like, 
What would you give the average person that says, I need a, a cup of internet? Mm-hmm. Give them something locked down. I get that. That's like giving a grandpa a Linux box and no root password. I get mm-hmm. it. Okay. You, <laughs> but sometimes it's ridiculous. Like I have a Buffalo router. I had to make a JTAG in order to get <laughs> WRT installed on it. That, that's usually, it's like a little bit above your average, you know, trouble. Yeah, no, JTAGging a Buffalo rider. Okay. Hey, man, listen, it, it became a matter of principle. And I was pretty sure it was going to brick. It didn't brick, but I was like, oh, all right. That's the, tis the season. <laughs> Yay! This is yeah, a I guess, Penguin uh, Festival. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So this is a, the Linux Journal presents 12 holiday gifts under $59 for your Linux loved ones. And I have several of these gifts in Tux this room. Tux needs a penny. <laughs> yeah, no, Tux needs some socks. Did they, yes. Look for, yes. I, I mean, they look for like horror penguin feet? Because I don't know what's going I on know. there. That is like... Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like i well, have the uh, emu claws I, and i'm a penguin <laughs> so let's talk about some of the things that we got going on uh um, yes because really the only reason we put this in there so we can judge them let's be honest yeah starting Fair. with a raspberry no. pi model a plus Hmm. Got one. Got one. I got one. I don't have the, the box because yes. I already stashed it away. But I have box. one. <laughs> hey, man. I think pies are basically as effective as cash. You can always find a use for it. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. If yes. You, if you got a Linux <laughs> in your <laughs> life, <laughs> pretty oh, good. Yeah. Now, Jill, you would know more about this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and these are um, um, from Unix stickers. Uh, Dot com and they are offering the pro pack of 10 stickers for just one dollar for plus free shipping and that's really cool they've worldwide they've had free for, shipping yeah worldwide free shipping oh i think i might and, need some stickers then yes yes pedro <laughs> you need to get some and um the elite pack is of 20 stickers is only 19 dollars, and the ultimate pack of 30 stickers is only 24 dollars and I have many of these stickers on this cabinet back here, which you can't see. There's actually several hundred stickers on it from scale. And uh, all, all our stickers from scale are made by Unix stickers. So this Yeah, is I have cool. a bunch that Mir <laughs> sent. The, I think he used uh, stickers yeah. as a uh, packing material for the camera. So yes. I have a bunch of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're awesome. We always get lots of good, good uh, swag from um, next, sticker swag. We have... <laughs> Maybe for the more discerning individual, the tough, uh, tough, tux, cufflinks, ah, yes. earrings and bracelets are included. Mm-hmm. Um, mm, all right. I, the cufflinks, maybe, because I wear uh, French cuffs. So I have a bunch yeah. of cufflinks, but I think I'm the only person in North America that does that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, earrings, I only have, I've only had one earring left. So I don't know. Probably not that. Bracelets. <laughs> I, I destroy bracelets like I would watches. Yeah, no, I have a wristwatch. No bracelets. Right. <laughs> uh, but the a, I was just looking at the design of that. It's like, it would have been so much nicer if it would have been... It's like, yeah, the cufflinks are, are like a silvery metal. Mm-hmm. And then you'd have a black background rather than the white. And the Tux logo, instead of being the full color one, you just yeah. have the same silvery material that you use for the cufflinks themselves sticking out from the black. That yes. would look so much nicer. So sweet. I normally wear my Rick and Morty cufflinks, man, so. (laughs) Okay, Rick and Morty I sort of get. that. that, It's a very colorful show. That would look better in monochrome, just saying. That's the type of thing you buy somebody, so when they're like, hey, I own cufflinks. That's the end of that sentence, period. Yeah. Um, All right, uh, plushies. Yes. So um, also uh, on the list is... Uh, Zaw Reason Tux Penguin, um, which you can purchase for just $19. And it is so cute and fluffy. And it's actually right here in my room. And I'm pointing to it right now. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, I had just put my uh, penguin there uh, 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 last week. It's actually right there. But you can only see it in the in the big view. 
<laughs> but um, they, uh, yeah, that's the cheapest uh, Tux Penguin in that size you can get. Uh, Zaw Reason also makes wonderful Linux computers and laptops, and mm -hmm. they have an awesome Penguin backlit keyboard that is now on sale for twenty five dollars. It used to be fifty, so it's it's a deal. And we yeah, no, we, that um, was a significant yeah. sale if they didn't charge up the wazoo for UK uh, shipping. shipping. But I got that keyboard. <laughs> but yeah, I I have a lot of their items because they're 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 donators to Linux Chicks LA. In fact, they've given us some of their items to raffle off at our booth, including. Yeah. Including oh. the penguin. <laughs> it's good to know that you've been bought. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we know who not to talk about when Jill's around. Okay. <laughs> this next one is stolen and improved. Uh, it lacks katanas, but a stuff. <laughs> Yeah. GNU, because you need some GNU with your Linux, or Stolman will jump through your window brandishing his flaming katanas and take you out, as he does. The yeah. height of 7.5, I'm guessing that's freedom units, inches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a price of $25. That, listen, you better make sure it's a BSD Linux <laughs> floss-loving person, or they're going to be particularly cross with you buying a <laughs> yes. somewhat arguably fuggly stuffed animal. And they're like, what What? What the exploit deleted is this supposed to be? Yeah, just like, what Aww. animal is this? It looks like a rat got a little too uh, frisky with a dog at one point. <laughs> <laughs> it looks a bit yeah. diseased. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're going to cut through these. <laughs> Librem keys. We talked about this on the show like two weeks ago. Those things are cheap, yeah. man. So yeah, store mm -hmm. all of your encryption keys in a single USB stick. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's what it does. Good idea. <laughs> and something we, Pedro and myself, ah. probably don't oh, know yes. anything about. Oh, yes. That would be gaming. <laughs> I mean, there's no games on oh, Linux. Yeah. That's why we use it. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're productive. Yeah. Um, the Steam gift cards are just a good idea. If anyone you know in your life likes to play video games and they are a PC gamer, just get them a Steve, uh, Steam, uh, yes, a Steve gift card. Steve gift card. <laughs> <laughs> well, Steve has bought me those for Christmas before. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I'm, I'm normally completely against gift cards, but. You know the right person that you're going to get that yeah. for. They'll use it. They'll be happy mm -hmm. with it. But make sure that they want a $50 game and give them a 21. Give them two 21s, <laughs> but hide one of them in the box. <laughs> make them work for it a little bit. Evil mad scientist, Mega Menorah Knight. That, all right. <laughs> I'm sure I mean this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, either you or Jordan were involved in the naming of this one. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. clearly from our 9000 series products at LGC. Uh, one can let their nerd flag fly with this LED Hanukkah mm -hmm. menorah besides this USB menorah. Is that it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you can get yep. them in different sizes, including a uh, one that's as tall as I am. Six feet one. <laughs> so cool. that's, uh, I mean, it's, <laughs> the, they have the Adafruit Pro trinket, uh, some other things. But I want that thing to be like Ark of the Covenant, Indiana Jones. It was like shock you and melt your face off if you touched it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no. Uh, it's a it, yeah. It's a USB menorah that you can hack into and basically do whatever you want with it. Badge, badge stickers. <laughs> yes, is that still yeah. a thing? Yeah. Do, you, do you do that? Oh yeah, yeah. Actually, for under two dollars, you can get um, your choice of whatever distro you want. Computer gad badge stickers. Uh, I was about to say, Jill, nice. that doesn't say Arch, so it's wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <it's> Debian. <laughs> but you can get these on um, Etsy, and they have them on on eBay as well as Amazon. And I have one of these on every one of my cases, and uh, displaying the all the different distros that I use. So I have. I love uh, those. <laughs> I know Jill likes rare things. I have one directly from AMD. It's not a Linux sticker, but it's an AMD case badge of Superman opening his oh. Clark Kent mm -hmm. with the AMD print on it. They were getting yes. those up. I, yeah, that's, something. that's cool. Uh, I don't do that. I, I don't have any, I, I, I'm anti, I guess I'm just anti everything, Pedro. Rawr. Yeah, I Bomber. take the stickers off of laptops because they tend to accumulate all the grime and this dead skin off your hands. Yeah. Uh, just, just get rid of them. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I can understand a case badge. Yeah, uh, if it's a case and you're not touching it, yeah, by all means, put some if stickers I, If on I it. can find a Hannah Montana <laughs> distro case badge, I'll, I'll use it. <laughs> yes. Probably make a custom one. Maybe we can but make yeah. it happen. 
All right. Uh, the, there's also yeah. the Linux Journal subscription. If, uh, again, yes. you have something that's really into Linux and they like to read the Linux Journal, by all means, g- give uh-huh. them a subscription for that. There's a random Toshiba portable external hard drive that is Linux compatible. It's hey. a USB hard drive. You got to watch Just- out. Sometimes <laughs> USB hard drives are not Linux <laughs> Compatible question. Uh, that hasn't been the case since 2001. <laughs> this thing better have an affiliate link. It doesn't even have an affiliate link. What are you doing, no. website? No. <laughs> it's like, okay, uh, I get the use. It's an external hard drive, but did, 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 really? <laughs> uh, all right. That's a thing. And a cheat sheet t shirt. The XKCD yes. cheat sheet. This is t-shirt. awesome. 19 bucks, <laughs> reasonably <Yep>. priced. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it's upside down, so you can read it as you look down. <laughs> yeah. And just do what I, I do. I just get sexy and take it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this shirt I have on was from uh, Think Geek years ago. They don't even even sell their Linux shirts anymore. That, but that's how they started. But you can get these on um, on Amazon and eBay and whatnot. So got mm-hmm. root shirts everywhere. Yeah, I think <laughs> Pretty cool. I have uh, two of their Linux ties. I guess they probably still sell them. Yeah. Um, yeah. My red and blue one. Yeah. I think the ties yeah. they, just, they, they still do have. <laughs> right on. So uh, you can get that for your Linux loving miscreant in your life or confuse friends and family yeah. with these bizarre yes. moon gifts that they have no idea yes. why they've received. Yeah. Yeah, or, yeah. Or, or tell them this is what you want for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you want better than you do. It's like white elephant gifts, man. I mean, yeah. What do I do with this? I don't know. Hey, uh, we're coming dangerously close to having our own T-shirts. I'm getting a little worried. Yes. Very, very, very Yay. close. Like terrifyingly close. <laughs> uh, we got a bunch of people, some of the coolest people on the internet making this show possible. They're the lovely ones over at Patreon. Uh Get a few extra shackles to carry away. Hey, we don't do yeah. ads. We just like to thank people. And mm-hmm. a bunch of ways to do that. I want to give a shout out to everybody because you've been blowing us up on those Amazon affiliate links. You click on that, oh, you don't yes. have to do anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you, Pedro. Pedro buys the links. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. We've been, yeah. I've been we using got, that uh, a lot lately. Amazon wish gift. list. A couple of things. Hardware <laughs> for the studio. If you're like, screw that. I just want to get you something. Know what you get. You end up on Frank's wall. In the credits, it's kind of brilliant and humble. Humble, humble, humble is, uh, we get most of that charity and that's how we have the split. And, but we get a couple of coins from that. If you're going to be buying games from Honda bundle or anything like that, but back to what I was talking about, this, this is what I'm worried about. Mm-hmm. This is what I'm worried about. Ooh. Yay. <laughs> the 115 new <beautiful> party <laughs> patrons at 267, yes. that's $7 over. Oh, yes. Our goal of merchandiser. This has been our unicorn Yay. goal forever <laughs> mm-hmm. to do the runs of shirts, posters, novelty mirrors, and possibly flamethrowers. I don't know. I think Elon might have beat us to that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the best way to help us out with this. Uh, let's, do, let's us bring everything. We're, we're doing a gang of new stuff and we keep on rolling yes. it out, playing with it. And it gives you access to our Discord. Mm-hmm. Look at these beautiful people. Hanging oh, yeah. out in there. That's where we're at the other six yes. days of the week. And I do like to point out, we're actually in our Discord because mm-hmm. yes. I <laughs> back up people on Patreon. I'm not naming names, and they're never in their Discord. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. <laughs> you I can know. clearly Ghost go town. scroll <laughs> up and you can watch me arguing with the developer of Lutris about Desk. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Because Admittedly, Patreon, I started that. Patreon started it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I need desk recommendations because I'm moving and I need a <laughs> nice desk. Yes. And yeah, Strider and Ven just went at it. <laughs> it's got a, it's kind of a thing we do. That's how we show our love to each other. But you do get a custom RSS feed that you can drop in any podcast player. You can uh, come hang out in our pre pre super shows, and that's an extra podcast we do just for patrons and. Uh, because you're our bosses and we like to keep you informed on what's going on behind the mm-hmm. scenes. We even do that live if you're in Discord. You can click on, uh, what is it? The uh, Creep Shows on yeah. <laughs> Saturdays when we do that at yes. 8.30, an hour early. So come in, participate, yeah. mm-hmm. share your ideas. Uh, you have, a, what do you guys got coming up tomorrow? Jill, some oh, D&D or something? yeah. Yeah, so we're going to be playing the Dungeons and Dragons uh, Dungeon Crawler RPG starting tomorrow. We're going to have a long campaign on uh, with uh, Jordan and the Canadian stream. 
So that's going to be a lot of fun. Canadian stream. <laughs> UG <O-S. laughs> It's all North America, man. All right. Yeah. All right. Time for oh, wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, we, we, we have, we to, have, we have, have to an executive producer someone. today. Yeah. <laughs> Jill, who was it this week? <laughs> this is a drummer seven in yes. uh, he's, he's Discord and chat. One Thank you. Our latest executive our producer. executive producer. Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> dropped in. It's already in Discord meeting everyone. Yes. Oh, yes. That it is. Uh, oh, yes. Y- you would call mm-hmm. everyone in our Discord eccentric if we were rich, but we're not. Yeah. <laughs> so we're just crazy. Just crazy. But but the good kind of crazy, you know? Aww. And uh, that's really cool. That's always yeah, how that's awesome. to get people hitting us up like that. Now, now, now we can, now we can get some pie. Now we're off yeah. to the pie. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's, that's another reason that I need a laser cutter. I'm really trying to justify that. Ah, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to cut pie yes <laughs> check it out rogue pie uh mm-hmm. we did it reddit reddit helps admin <laughs> solve mystery of a rogue raspberry pie at a university mm-hmm. yes uh he was digging around a network closet and one thing you really don't want to see is an undocumented piece of hardware like a raspberry pie just plugged in with a bluetooth adapter and you're like what's going on here brad <laughs> So you do the natural thing and go to Reddit and be like, hey, man, why do I have a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth adapter hooked up to a Pi? Can we track it down? And well, they went through the process. They identified what it was and what the hardware was hooked up to it. And of course, Reddit's going to Reddit. They had theories. Perhaps it was a pen testing by the Red Team or a sophisticated attempt to gain backdoor access with the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi traffic or the, let's see... Mm-hmm. Oh, right. It could have been like maybe possibly an outside security company plugging mm-hmm. that in there. Like a red team actually doing some pen testing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, but <laughs> nope. Nope. Mm-mm. Still not 100% sure what this is doing, but the reason this is there, mm-hmm. which <laughs> perplexes me right now, even as I say the magic words, a former employee who still has access to that room has a key to it which means yes. this dude has some dirt on management oh, why yeah. do you say that then because management knows and allow it mm-hmm. yeah no management uh no and uh they let him keep the key and apparently he was the put uh, the one who put the uh the raspberry pi there so yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is why I think the dude's got some dirt because you don't do something that obvious. Yeah, unless yeah. you're really sure. It's like you can't get rid of me. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I saw that. And let me pick your brain a minute because I was thinking, like, when I notice somebody messing with the hardware in, you know, a server environment or anything like that, fortunately, I don't deal with that day to day anymore. But. Mm-hmm. My first instinct, maybe it's yours, is not not to uh, stop them. I don't want to put an end to it. I want to mess with them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. I, I don't want them to <laughs> oh know I know, but I want to make their life difficult in ways that amuse me. Because, let's face it, I'm a horrible person. Um, it, yeah. it, it could no, be to no. something. <laughs> it, it, it could, good example. When I f- first got this place. No one had Wi-Fi. I mean, like I, I walked around with my mobile and a bunch of old people mm-hmm. live here. And I, I'm not being ageist. I'm just being, come on, be honest here. And nothing. I mean, nothing. So I was like, okay, fine. I didn't even notice like the moon device that my Uverse came through had Wi-Fi on it, but it had one of those, you know, push enabled mm-hmm. Wi-Fi. So I was like, all right, mm-hmm. whatever. Didn't pay any attention to it. And I was upstairs doing something on the computer, and I noticed a light blinking that I'd never seen on it. And I was like, well, what's going on here? What's going on here? This point to this, stick with me. And so, you know, you get down, you look, and you're like, oh, Wi-Fi, huh? So I log into it, and I was like, oh, I guess it had guest Wi-Fi on. Who is doing this? And I lean back to think, you know, do this, right? <laughs> Through the window, and our houses are nowhere near each other, but I could see him. I could see if he happened to be on a bed with a laptop. Uh. He'd gotten as close as he could. I was like, oh, oh, okay. 
So I probably <laughs> spent about a better part of 45 minutes enabling and disabling randomly. Yeah. <laughs> We've all had fun See, more driving at one time or another. <laughs> See, uh, I had uh, the uh, router that my landlord at university had. Uh, wait a minute. Wait uh, a minute. All right. We've gotten you saying router, but you won't throw down on aluminium. <laughs> <laughs> it, it kind of slipped out because at work I have to say router because right. the router is what you use to Peer pressure. Never mind. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's uh yeah no uh a router uh, actually allowed uh, to have a guest network which you could set specific rules for, and one of the options that they gave you was to say uh, replace uh, pictures with a lower resolution one, or have your own pool of pictures, like say you pointed it at a specific server at around a certain time that a certain script was being floated around the internet that replaced all of the JPEGs and PNGs with pictures of cats. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you were anywhere <laughs> near my funny. place of residence in university, you could have free internet, but all of the JPEGs and all of the PNGs were pictures of cats. <laughs> and he's never taken that setting off to this day. <laughs> I don't know if that network is still up, so it may very well still be a thing. <laughs> now, I, I have seen some like delightfully malicious things set up with a proxy, but you know, flipping the images upside down. Um, yeah. Among other things. Uh, <laughs> but this guy, yeah, uh, <laughs> that, that, that's too ballsy to worry about getting in trouble in the first place. Yes. Like, I do what I want. It's like, you're accessing my network at this point, so <laughs> bye. <laughs> yeah, uh, keep that in mind if you're at this particular university. That'll be in the show notes. Mm -hmm. Jill, uh, do you do anything to, uh, like, mess with people nefariously i mean do you derive joy from this <laughs> no <laughs> well I, i've done a little bit in the past yes <laughs> but not now <laughs> no. i mean can you not tell us about it due to statute of limitations you know we're getting legal yeah trouble? that hasn't expired yet yeah. it was like yes. last week <laughs> man i got some tells to tell you kids in like six yeah years, man. yeah <laughs> <laughs> Most of mine was done on the the days of elite BBS of your elite BBSs, not regular BBSs. Yep. No, yes, elite. The, these had yes. stickers on them that said elite that made them. Better. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, maybe you have a really fun story uh, about legally ish gray area messing with people, and you want to tell us about it. We'd love to read it, Pedro. Oh, yes. Yes, we would. And the best way to relay it to us is to go to escapecast.com. You hit the contact button. Make sure to pick LWDW from the little choosy box and fill out the form as requested. Uh, once you're done with typing down your story, uh, Google may or may not ask you to uh, train their AI. But more often than not, it's just a little click that you have to do to prove that you're not a robot. Once that's uh, that's got a little tick on it, just hit the send button and we will feature your story right here, right now. Allegedly. Like Zoe. Unless it's really weak. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Zoe, uh, last week, apparently, we yes. were uh, taking a big old poo-poo on the Unity desktop. Rightly so, in my opinion. Uh, but she yes. wrote in and says, I was witness to the Unity desktop hate of LWDW145. And I must say that I personally still use the Unity 7.5.0 desktop, which is in the Ubuntu 1804 repo every day on all of my machines. I feel for you. Uh, it still works perfectly, bar a few settings. There we go. There's the qualifier. For uh, <laughs> a bar a few settings menus for settings I've already configured using G settings commands, and a few tray icons not showing up without an environment variable behind apps that try to show one. I personally believe mm -hmm. Unity is the is the the Linux desktop. <laughs> um, has ever had, and I will continue to use it until the sad day on which it stops working. Aww. Thoughts? Aww. Pedro, do you yeah. know the desktop? <laughs> the desktop. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was the easy. It is just yeah. No, uh, after Aww. Ben's comment about the way earlier, yeah. <laughs> that, that's yeah. the old thing, man. I, I'll, I'll throw this logic out, Zoe. You, you change distros as much as you change desktops, so. <laughs> 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 I don't even think Aww. Jill would back you up on this one. I, yeah. this, this is a good yeah. shot, but nobody's buying it. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> oh, well, thank you to Zoe, one of our patrons in chat for this, of course. And um, I'm happy you wrote in. And actually, Unity performance is much better these days. 
but had a history of, well, no. <laughs> so we used to be so slow and sluggish and, and I didn't have, you know, an application me menu or menu bar and it just drove me up the wall. <laughs> so, 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 and, and I don't have a, um, a desktop manager that doesn't have an application uh, menu. I have to have an application menu on every desktop that I use. That's just, you know, I've I've been using Linux and since the beginning and Unix before that with the days of CDE and TWM. So, it so is, I, I like to have a roundabout way of saying we're old and set in our ways. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when Unity was first introduced in the Ubuntu 10.10 uh, 10 .10 netbook edition, remember that one, kids? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. it, uh, it was the perfect poop storm, as it were, because, oh, uh, it's a new uh, desktop that's geared towards um, uh, computers with a smaller resolution. It was frighteningly box. close to being geared towards toasters. Dodge that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, oh, yeah, they have uh, really tiny screens with really low resolution. They have single core 32-bit Atom processors, one, sometimes two gigabytes <laughs> yes. of RAM. And we're going to shove the single most demanding desktop environment yeah. ever created on Loaded. Linux... Yeah. It made KDE look slim by comparison. Yes. And we're just going to shove that on netbooks. That was a brilliant yeah. decision. That didn't no, burn that's... any people at all <laughs> there, Canonical. Yes. He, he had one one sentence in the notes, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> that was just the thing to remind me of what I needed to one, say. One cannot restrain Pedro's unabashed <laughs> hatred for a desktop manager. I don't know. Hey, Aww. I'm kind of losing that hate for uh, GNOME because I have been uh, using GNOME on the ThinkPad. And, you know, version 320, I don't hate it. Yeah. Uh, 328, sorry. I don't hate it. Hmm. Yeah. Running yeah. much better. I, don't know, yeah. I remember you know, the story. I remember getting um, Unity up and running on Fedora. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I built it. This was way before it got. It, it was wow. released in any. Because it's like they they didn't sell me on anything. The curiosity got a hold of me. They're like, we're rethinking the way. You know, it was basically a shell all the time. It's like, okay, I got to try some of this. We got it up and running. It wasn't like I invented the way, you know, I just followed a guide of somebody else who had spent the time of getting up and running, tried it out. And I was like, yeah, this is rubbish. Uh, but immediately I was like, this might make sense on a touch interface later, yeah. much later. And it was much more developed. <laughs> so I had a chance to try it on touch. Still didn't make any sense. Um, yeah. But I will always say you have to give canonical credit for trying. Yes. Yeah. Oh, they tried. And we saw just uh, how high that particular brand of confidence was when an IPO yeah. became a possibility. Can't it's help like, himself. He's like a cat. That. He's like, nah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, they, they got to keep you know, rolling the with what they got, and yeah. they they want the yeah. gnome to. There are people out there. It's like no unity forever. <laughs> You, you're never going to place everyone. You know. Yeah. No, <laughs> nope. ne never will. And the beauty of Linux is that you can use whatever desktop manager works for you. I'm still using the ancient Window Maker and Flexbox and XFCE because I like to right-click on my desktop and get my menu. <laughs> yeah. so. I have Mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mate is awesome. <laughs> You can use what you want, unless and it's different from, one, from what somebody else is using, then you're wrong. Then all of your other opinions on everything else is wrong, too. And yeah. that person will change what they're using in six months. <laughs> the internet didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're going to bounce out of here. I want to thank everyone for showing up, joining us live, or listening to us after the yeah. fact. And you're wondering, how can I do that? We're on YouTube. You can, yes. like... Mm -hmm. I, yeah, we have a YouTube channel, right? Yeah, we do. It's okay. got like, oh, yes. uh, 2.3 thousand subscribers it, for some yeah. reason. That's a lot of misclicks. That's uh, awesome. You can click the ringy bell. Uh, we are work 
King on, mm-hmm. I'm about to find out whether or not Jordan's listening, on simulcasting to YouTube and Twitch. Yeah, and Twitch. Yay. That'll so, be nice to go back to Twitch because that's, that's where LGC thing. started on. I, I was going <laughs> to say, no, it wasn't. <laughs> well, well, the LGC the podcast yeah. streams. Nope. Streams. Yeah. Justin uh, TV. Yes. There you go. Yeah. Justin oh, TV. Justin. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. yeah. I remember that. Twitch, yeah. Basically. Yeah. I remember. And I remember who else that. is streaming right. their Linux shows on this? <laughs> what? Yeah. All right. Uh, we're going to do some credits. You've been awesome. We'll be back mm-hmm. next week as soon as I can find the right thing. Is that it? Yeah, it is. I hear it. There's noise. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you, Ben Stone. Thank you, Pedro Mateus. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much, Joe. <laughs> <Aww. laughs> and we got our original credits back. And thank you to our wonderful executive you... <laughs> producers. <laughs> These are handmade. <laughs> <laughs> Including Drummer7. Thank you again. <laughs> And thank you to all, all our wonderful producers. We got many of them out there, <laughs> including me and my husband. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, you guys That's basically bought your way into the show, so <laughs> yeah. you, you can have it. <laughs> Aww, LWW 145. That's just amazing. <laughs> Yay! Bye, chat room. We love you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>